You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. But look, the wolf on the hill, right, is not as hungry as the wolf climbing the hill. It's true. See? He's not as hungry, but not when he hungry. wants the food, it's there. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore data. All right, so I have a feeling, depending on how long this is going to take me to run through this stuff, but there's kind of a lot. I have a feeling this might take a very long time. So you all need to buckle up. Now, here's the goal for today. Thank you for joining me. I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on and everything's getting slapped together. If I may use one of my famous food analogies once again, it's kind of like the main course came out, right? Let's just say the main course is Rogers is a jerk and he hates the team and he's leaving and he's never coming back. And then the dessert came out and we just started eating our food but we didn't finish and they threw the cake right on the plate with the burger. And so now we're trying to eat and our burger kind of tastes like cake and our cake tastes like burger. And we're saying, you know, this, you know, the cake is kind of meaty and this frosting is a little ketchupy and everything's just kind of getting all mixed together and it's becoming a big mess and everybody's mad and they're mad at the wrong things, right? This burger's not good because it tastes like cake. It's like, no, it, it, that's, well, hold on now. Maybe the burger isn't good, but it's not because it tastes like cake. You're conflating two things that are not correct. Right. And the 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 frosting is not actually very ketchupy. Again, it might be bad, but it's not ketchupy. That's because your your ketchup from the burger spilled on it and you're conflating two things. And by the way, the ketchup might actually be quite good on the burger, but it's that's over there in its own context. And the cake is over here. And so we have to segment each individual thing and we got to analyze each individual thing as it stands and and try to do let's just do this the right way. So what I want to do is go through each individual thing. I want to do a little bit of a timeline, and I want to go through and say who said what and when, right? Because, you know, Adam Schefter's an idiot because he said that he sent text messages, and, and there were no text messages. No, he didn't. He never said that. Well, he, he said Rogers hates Gutekunst. Nope, that was somebody else. And actually, nobody said that Rogers hates Gutekunst. There, there was a completely different context. A teammate told a guy from Yahoo about the text messages. Now, maybe he's lying. I don't know. That's a separate conversation. But again, let's try to keep each individual category in its own category and analyze each thing individually. Because let me, this is the thing I chose not to say yesterday because my time was up and I didn't want to get too into it. Here's, Here's exactly what I think is happening. I think you generally have camps. You've got some people who have been relatively anti and I've talked about this before, right? You've got these spectrums, people who despise Rogers on one end and people who worship Rogers on the other end, and then kind of a spectrum in between. I think there was a huge contingent of people that came out real, because if you just analyze it from afar, it seems like there's this wave of everybody was real anti Rogers, and now everybody's real pro Rogers. I think you're looking at two different camps. And I think for about a week, week and a half, two weeks, whatever it was, Rogers took an absolute beating. And the Rogers, I'm going to call them because I feel like it, Rogers sycophants, the people that are pro Rogers, Rogers is everything. This team is garbage without him. Um, he can do no wrong. He's our hero. I, I also have a theory that these tend to be younger people, but you know, it is what it is. When all this other news broke, right? The Schefter thing broke, which again, nobody is correctly citing what exactly happened with Schefter. And then you've got Kuhn's statements. You got James Jones's statement. You've got AJ Hawk's statement. You've got uh, McAfee who's coming out like just back. So now all of a sudden the wave is. And so now all the pro Rogers people who have been in hiding for two weeks are on a massive assault, offensive. They're going on the attack now. They're pulling receipts. They're going after everybody. They're demanding apologies from me. And, and, And they don't know what they're talking about because they jumped the gun because nothing actually has really happened. Now, again, maybe me and some other people overextended a bit. But it's, it's just a muddled mess. And so we're going to go through this step by step. Who said what and what exactly is happening? Because you've got a full range of people who still believe, you know, on one end that Rodgers is done. He's never coming back, right? He's, he's, he basically quit. He hates the team. He hates everybody. He's leaving. On the other end, you actually have people that believe that nothing is happening. And the whole thing is made up, which is 
I mean, we'll easily verify that that's false in about four seconds going through this. But that's the goal for today. And and I'm going to try not to narrate as much as possible, but it is my podcast and I'm going to give my opinion. But I'm going to try to hold that back as best as I can and just say, here's what so-and-so said and try as best as I can to just leave it. Because again, I just want to say, here's what was said and from who, and here are their sources, and you can either choose to believe it or not believe it, but this is what was said in the proper context at the proper time, and now you make whatever decision you think is most rational. And I'm going to encourage you to not think emotionally and not try to choose a team, but actually think what makes the absolute most amount of sense based on the information being said here. Because again, I have changed, essentially changed sides on this based on the wealth of information. There's too much information in one direction for me to stay where I was. It's just, it became irrational to stay where I was. But anyways, I went through and did a lot of homework and then right up, I'm not going to say I finished because I still don't think I finished. There's probably other things that are out there that I missed, but it is what it is. I'm not super worried about it. Um, Most of the people even that have tried to provide additional context to the things that I've been saying obviously didn't even actually listen. They're just providing little snippets that they heard because I went and listened to it and it's like, no, that's not what was said. But if I miss something and you'd like to add it, go ahead and add it. It doesn't matter. But after I went and did a lot of this homework, I see an article from The Ringer that laid out a an actual timeline. I'm like, oh, friggin' frack, man. Had this whole thing out here for me. But I've got some additional clips that I've got queued up, and I, I spent a lot of time uh, putting all this together. So there's going to be a lot of audio, a lot of clips, and that's why this is probably going to take a very long time. Um, for one of the interviews, I think the first Brian Gutekunst interview, it's like 21 minutes long and they're all Aaron Rodgers questions. So I am just going to simmer, summarize all the points he made and you can either trust me or go back and verify for yourself. That's entirely up to you. I don't care. But I did listen to every single question, every single answer and provide a summary for those. All right, so let's get started. And, um, again, this first point doesn't super matter, but I will, we'll just go through it step by step here. Again, this is, uh, Roger Sherman from the ringer and I'm using his timeline January 12th, Aaron Rodgers breaks major TV news, and that is that he will be a guest host of Jeopardy, right? Again, I, you know, I think given the context now, you kind of look at it and go, that that is a factor to what degree, I don't know. How much does that play into his decision? How much leverage does that give him to be able to hold out? Would he actually walk away from football and do that? I don't know. And and again, we're too far into the realm of, of skepticism to really play with that. But that is the first step in the in the timeline of at least somewhat relevant news to what we're talking about. Whatever. That's when it happened. It's on uh, Pat McAfee's thing. January 12th, 2021, 12, 12 p.m. is uh, Pat McAfee's Twitter, if you want to see that quote or that, that video. I'm not going to play it because, again, I don't find it all that terribly interesting. Then we have January 24th, and the heading is Aaron is already fed up. This is after the loss to the Buccaneers in the NFC Championship game. Which led to, um, now in the article, which I don't necessarily agree with, and, and you're going to see this massively from the media, and that is Matt LaFleur is an idiot for not keeping the ball in Aaron Rodgers' hands and giving him an opportunity to score a touchdown there. It was absolutely the right decision to kick a field goal. There's no question in my mind that would have been stupid. Aaron Rodgers was playing like garbage. The whole team was playing like garbage. They could not score touchdowns in the red zone. They couldn't do anything at any point at all. The odds of them scoring a touchdown in that moment were basically zero. However, the defense actually was doing a decent enough job, at least a better job than the offense was. So considering that this was, you know, there's one play, it's fourth down. If we don't score a touchdown, the game is over. We can kick a field goal here, and then we need to get a stop, which we almost did, by the way. If there was no penalty on Kevin King, they're punting. They're punting. And then then Aaron Rodgers has an entire, it's not fourth down. You have first down, second down, third down. You have the rest of, of how much time was on the clock to go down and score and win the game. But anyways, they're saying that's why he's mad, whatever. But I think the real key to this part of the interview, and, and I don't think any of us really understood this part of it, but he says in that press conference, quote, there's a lot of unknowns going into this offseason, a lot of guys' futures that are uncertain, myself included. Now, obviously for me, and I'm thinking most people, and maybe this is what he meant, he's thinking, or, or we were thinking, I was thinking, he was saying, he doesn't know exactly what the plan is for the Packers and Aaron Rodgers, and maybe that is weighing on him. In fact, the thought that I had today, and I don't remember who was talking or, or what made me think of this, but there's a part of me that thinks that this does make sense, what Rodgers is doing. And it, it, fall, it goes back to the part where, look at the two major factors. Well, I don't know how many factors. I don't feel like counting. He's never going to have this much leverage ever again. He knows he's not going to repeat as the MVP. 
That's 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 stupid to think that he's going to do that. He was the MVP last year. He gets MVP clout today. He has the most leverage he's ever going to have. Second point, his contract basically has very little guarantees after this season. Third point, his contract weighs massively on the contract uh, on, on the salary cap next year to the point of being completely unreasonable, untenable. And then you got number four, which is the fact that Jordan Love is going to be given another year of learning and growing and developing, this time as the number two, and the Packers will be very willing, if at all possible, to move forward. All it will take is an injury or a possible regression or a possible explosion of talent from Jordan Love for the Packers to say, we're moving on, that's all it's going to take. And one year after an MVP season, he's out the door. So all this posturing about he's not happy, maybe that is the case, but maybe the other side of the coin is, I need to lock down whatever I can lock down today. Because this is my last chance to be locked in for any uh, period of time. Because again, if anything happens, I'm gone. And he knows that. And again, maybe that is part of what this statement is. Or maybe it's really just that he was fed up and planning on leaving. And I don't know. But that was on January 24th. February 2nd, the relationship with him and Shailene goes public. I don't care about that. I'm going to skip a couple of these because these are stupid. Uh, MVP thing, he mentioned it. They said he overshadowed his own MVP. Like, that means something. Um... February 22nd, Shailene um, confirms it. 28th, Jody Foster, shout out. And a lot of this is stupid. I mean, not stupid. He did a great job. This is a lot of research and all that, but it's not super relevant. Don't want to be super mean. I mean, you know, I'm sure he worked very hard on this. The next bit of somewhat significant news, and again, this may be just, it may be nothing, and Aaron Rodgers laid it out to be nothing, but it, it seems significant considering what we're talking about. So here's what it is. April 5th, Aaron wants a new job. Rogers filmed his guest stint on Jeopardy over two days in February, but his episodes were broadcast in early April. On the day the first one aired, Rogers told the ringers Claire McNear that he didn't consider himself a temporary host, but a candidate for the full-time gig. Quote, I'm not shy about saying I want this job, he said after going into great detail about how he could conceivably host the show while keeping his job as, as a quarterback in the NFL. Quote, they film 46 days a year. I worked 187 this year in Green Bay. That gives me 178 days to do Jeopardy. So I feel like I could fit 46 into that 178 and make it work. So again, it's not necessarily cause for panic, although the media tried to make that a cause for panic. He said he wants that job. That must mean he doesn't want to play for the Packers anymore. And we all got whipped up into it because nobody actually listened to the full quote where he said, not that it's a great thing because you you don't really want him to take on too much. You want as much of his life to be consumed by football as possible. Uh, but he laid it out very clearly that it's not that hard to make it fit. And there's a whole bunch of nonsense about Shailene and vacations and uh, somebody jabbed him on Jeopardy. Who cares? Then we fast forward to April 29th. Obviously, we all know what this is about. Just hours before the first round of the draft, multiple league insiders began to report the same thing. Rodgers no longer wants to play for the Packers. Now, I'm going to pause here because I went out and actually found the clips. And what I want to do is I want to play what I'm calling the prequel. Obviously, if we're going in order of, you know, if we're going, you know, Star Wars or whatever kind of thing, the question is, do you go in order of release or do you go in order of how things happened uh, chronologically? We're going to go chronological on this one, and I'm going to play the prequel, which is actually one of the more recent things that we've heard, the thing that caused the Rogers contingent to go into an absolute frenzy, and that is Schefter essentially laying out how the news came to be. And again, I don't think anybody's getting this right. I think it's pretty straightforward. He's saying there were many sources over many months. He knew that this was a thing. And and it actually becomes more clear when you listen to what he said on draft day. There's no way he's guessing. There's a lot of very intimate details that he's been holding on to for a long time. But again, we'll start with this. Basically, that Aaron Rodgers wanted out of Green Bay. Uh, Walk me through that. Did you get a phone call or text? You know, Dan, the funny part about it is that I've heard people say, oh, Aaron Rodgers wanted that out before the draft. And mm-hmm. I can assure you Aaron Rodgers did not want that out before the draft. I've had people say the Green Bay Packers planted that. It was a very pro-Packers story. Yeah. I can assure you the Green Bay Packers didn't plant that. When people enough, guess at where stories come from, more often than not, they're usually wrong. And in this case, they're wrong. Mm. This was an accumulation all during the offseason of just listening to people talk and observing. And if we go back to the NFC Championship game that the Green Bay Packers lost at home, did we not hear Aaron Rodgers after that game talk about his 
level of unhappiness, if you will, uncertainty for the future. Just go back and listen to that press conference. And it sounds almost like he's saying goodbye to Green Bay. And so your antenna is up. And I'm just telling you throughout the course of the offseason, there was rarely a week that went by where I didn't hear something about Aaron Rodgers. And on draft day, there's a report that morning from Paul Allen out in Minneapolis that the 49ers made a draft offer, which they didn't make an offer. They never made an offer. And other people are saying that the 49ers called. And I said, how long till it gets out that Aaron Rodgers wants out of Green Bay? Is it next week? Is it next when he doesn't show to the OTAs? Is it next month when he isn't? It's going to come out. What does it matter if it comes out now uh-huh. or next week or next month? And so. So you chose to break the news on draft day. That is actually that is absolutely accurate. Correct. Huh. So here's the thing. I, I think he worded it terribly, but you have to have pretty selective hearing to not understand the full context. It sounds like if you cut off the end, if you cut off the very end, it sounds like what he's saying is because he talks about, well, I mean, if you were paying attention, you heard him almost saying goodbye. And it's just an accumulation of of information. And that, and he used that as like an example of information. And then, you know, it just sounds like that's what he's saying, what his sources were. That was very poorly worded. If you continue on, he says, at that point, your antenna is up. And he said, it wasn't hardly a week that went by that I didn't hear more news about Aaron Rodgers. Those are the sources. He's not talking about stuff like what what I'm talking about with Jeopardy. He's talking about actual news. And he goes on to verify that when he says, how long before the news breaks that Aaron Rodgers wants out? In other words, he has information that Aaron Rodgers wants out. He's been holding on to it and it's about to break. That's literally what he said. If you're going to use his words to discredit him, but we're not going to take into account all of his words, just some of his words, that's disingenuous. And so, like he said, there's now a report and there's all this stuff swirling and he's like, dude, this is about to break. Now, I don't know why people are, well, why would he hold on to it if he had the information? I don't know. Maybe he's he's gathering information. Maybe because there's nothing solid. Maybe because there's a little bit of integrity in terms of his journalism. And again, I'm sure he's a somewhat sleazy, slimy guy, but he was holding on to it for some reason. I'm sure because this is not exactly the kind of thing you want to break. There's probably going to be repercussions because the Packers and Rodgers are not happy about this. And he's got some kind of a reputation thing that he's worried that maybe I'm going to lose some contacts. Maybe people are going to be mad at me. But at the same time, this is about to break and I'm going to be the guy that doesn't break it. And I'm not going to let that happen. So he decided he called up his bosses. He's like, I got to break this right now. This is what's going on. Put me on TV. That's what happened. If you don't believe me, here we go. Let's listen to when he goes live on ESPN and listen to the detail. This is not a guy who's just guessing. Well, he seemed unhappy, so I'm going to guess he wants out. Nonsense. Let's listen to it in its entirety. Aaron Rodgers has told certain members of the organization that he does not want to return to the Green Bay Packers. And this is an issue that has gone on throughout the course of the offseason, so much so that each of the Packers' main individual decision makers, the president, Mark Murphy, the head coach, Matt LaFleur, the general manager, Brian Gutekunst, have each taken trips out west to go meet with Aaron Rodgers, to fly out and meet with him, to see if they could change his mind and convince him to come back to Green Bay, which he does not want to do at this point in time. But to date, Aaron Rodgers has not budged. And so we have a standoff here that nobody knows exactly where it's going. And thus, the 49ers called the Green Bay Packers last night, and the Packers said we're not trading him. And the Los Angeles Rams called in January before they traded for Matthew Stafford to see if they would trade him, and they were told no. And a short time ago, basically the general manager, Brian Gutekunst, issued this statement. As we've stated since the season ended, we are committed to Aaron in 2021 and beyond. Aaron has been a vital part of our success, and we look forward to competing for another championship with him leading our team. But the fact of the matter is, there are other members of the organization that don't know if and when Aaron Rodgers will show back up in Green Bay. He's going through a lot of change in his life right now. He's engaged to be married. He hosted Jeopardy during the offseason. Has a lot of hopes, a lot of different dreams, and I I don't think he's particularly happy right now being in Green Bay. And I think this dates back, ironically enough, to the draft last year when not only did the Green Bay Packers draft a quarterback, but they traded up to draft a quarterback. And not only did they trade up to draft a quarterback, but they didn't tell him in advance that they were drafting a quarterback. And obviously, we've seen a lot of cryptic comments from Aaron Rodgers from the time the season ended to now 
But it's a situation where essentially he's not happy in Green Bay. There is a standoff between Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers that has gone on to now, and we don't know how this is going to wind up. Remember, I asked you to be honest. I asked you to be honest. Not Forget your feelings. Forget what team you're on. You're telling me, honestly, that he's guessing. You're telling me that he had no information other than what we had, and he took a shot in the dark that they had all, each individually gone out and flown out to meet with him. All of these things, by the way, that he said have been confirmed. He mentioned how long it's been going on, the conversations, where Aaron Rodgers stands. By the way, all the speculation and stuff that we all say is false, he didn't say any of that. He said that there is a dispute. Rodgers is unhappy. The Packers would like to have him back. As of right now, Rodgers is not coming back. He didn't say he's never coming back. He didn't say any any of that stuff. He said he, this is one of the more like just basic, flat, vanilla, nothing reports. And it's this, it's it's the stuff that we've all kind of come to accept, aside from a couple fringe people who are saying there's nothing here. This is all made up, which is not true because again, this has all basically been verified. And we're going to go through all the comments from Matt LaFleur, Brian Gutekunst, and several others that are involved in this that have essentially verified every single one of these things, or at the very least have not outright refused it. And the idea, by the way, that not refusing it doesn't mean that they're, they're accepting it is stupid. If there is no dispute, if there is no problem, and somebody asks you what's going on, your response is going to be, nothing, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't be stupid. Don't pretend to be stupid. Again, I'm talking to like two people out there, but if you happen to be listening, stop it. Something is going on, we don't know what, and everything Adam Schefter said has been 1,000% verified because he had sources. He absolutely had sources. Where in that thing did he say, I had no sources? Did you hear him say, I had no sources? He said he heard something every single week about Aaron Rodgers. Those are the sources. So again, if you want to be mad, he leaked it on draft day, whatever, whatever. But again, there's a lot of people who are very mad about the anti rogers stuff. They've been laying low and you, you guys overshot and you're swinging wildly. And I'm telling you, this is going to come crashing right back down on your head. When cooler heads prevail and all this information starts coming out, you guys are going to look silly. So temper it a little bit. You want to beat back the onslaught of people who are going too far, fine. But you're all sounding kind of crazy right now, attacking anybody that says anything. People who are, everything I say is like, this is all fake. How could you believe, Schefter's a fake, he's a phone, it's all fake, 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 news is fake. You just believe what the news says. Yeah, everything, you just believe the news. I can't say anything without somebody rabidly uh, making a comment about, oh, you just believe everything the news says. What are you talking about? This has all been verified. 100, immediately after this, you have local Green Bay guys who didn't know this, who are making phone calls and they come out and they're like, dude, this is true. I just called my contacts, and they're like, yeah, this is legit. We talked to Gutekunst. We talked to LaFleur. I'm not talking about the sources. I'm talking about we as individuals have seen them on camera. We're going to go through it. So again, my, my, what I said yesterday about the, the official stance that I think we should, not to say that we can't guess where this is going to go or have a feeling. I mean, we can say whatever we want, and we can be pro Rogers, anti Rogers, pro team, anti-team, anti gutekunst pro Gutekunst should be more communication, doesn't need communication. All that doesn't matter. The correct stance is something is going on, and we don't know exactly what it is. And in fact, it's completely muddled, partially by what a lot of these um, teammates have been saying, because they're trying to come out and support Rogers, but at the same time, for me personally, and I'm kind of jumping the gun, but since it's on the forefront of my brain, have muddled it. Because what did they do? They came out and they said, look, this isn't about money. And this isn't about Gutekunst. Well, what the heck is it about? How do we resolve this? Mr. I'm 75% sure. It's not about firing Gutekunst. It's not about money. So it's not a contract thing. It's about respect. Okay, what respect? They've already said they're committed to him. A thousand percent. We're not trading him. He's our guy. A hundred percent MVP. We'd be stupid. He's a hundred thousand percent. We're going to commit to him. Apparently they've offered him a contract. I don't know how much of that is true. I don't know. At least a restructuring, which would help as far as making it impossible or harder for us to move on next year. If not an extension, I don't know that that's been verified. I'm very skeptical on that, but that's what everybody, including I think McGinn is the one that came out and said, and we'll get to McGinn that they offered to make him the highest paid quarterback in football, and he said no. So tell me what it's about then. How do we resolve this if it's not about money, and if it's not about Gutekunst, and they've already offered him money, and they've already said, we'll give you input on personnel decisions. We'll get to that as well. Actually, I don't think I am going to play that part, but he goes on to say, I would welcome input. He's such a smart guy. So where do we go from here? Just thinking out loud. Then Ian Rappaport comes out. 
he says, here is my understanding. And again, you can believe or disbelieve any of these things that you want. That's, that's entirely for you to figure out. Just try to make what you think is an informed decision. Here is my understanding of the Aaron Rodgers situation. Rodgers and the Packers have been negotiating a long-term contract offer. They've been working on it for weeks. Rodgers has been unhappy at times during those moments. No deal is done. He's not happy now. Then there was the tweet from Trey Wingo, which has been utterly refuted. And by the way, this is what happens when somebody says something to the Packers that's a lie. They don't just answer it like nothing happens. They stop the question and say that's nonsense, which is what Gutekunst did when this came up. But here's what Trey Wingo had to say. Sources. The Packers reportedly told Aaron Rodgers they were going to trade him in the offseason, then backed off. It's simply a bleep show between them ever since. Within the last week, Rodgers told the team, trade or no trade, I'm not coming back. Buckle up, folks. So I'm person again, you make whatever decisions you want. I tend to believe at least a lot of this. Trey Wingo goes in the this guy's full of crap column. Again, I don't know much about any of these guys, but I'm gonna try to remember I'll forget in two seconds because that's I just I can't store that kind of memory. Uh that that you know, whatever. But uh, Trey is, that's, that's garbage. And that's, that's maybe the only one that we've 100,000% confirmed, or at least seemingly have confirmed, is just completely bunk. And it doesn't mean he made it up. Maybe his sources are just trash. I don't know. But either way, he decided to put it out there. It's his reputation, and it just got completely tanked. Then you got Mike Florio, which, again, I don't think, I mean, it, you know, whatever. Do whatever you want to do. I'm obviously not a fan of Florio. I think he's full of it. But... Florio says uh, that Rodgers doesn't like anyone in the front office for a variety of reasons. Now, that could entirely be true, and, and I don't, I, you know, I tend to somewhat agree that that's true, but I don't know how much I trust his, for, his, his sources, and um, as far as doesn't like anyone, I don't know, whatever. Then Ian comes out and talks about Jeopardy again. Says, one more note on Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers. He really impressed the brass during his stint in Jeopardy. The belief is when they finished auditions, he'll be among those with a chance to do a full time, uh, to do the job full time. This isn't sorted out. A job hosting is also a possibility. Now, I'm going to stop with this article here because they skip to um, the Kentucky Derby. I'm going to now switch over to my notes because immediately following the draft, we had interviews. And obviously, right, the whole day was turned on its head, and now Matt LaFleur has to go face the audience, which, which what, what he thought was going to be based on the draft, and obviously just about every single question was about Aaron Rodgers. And again, it's about 21 minutes long, and I don't want to just sit here and play the whole thing. And um, it kind of takes a little bit of work for me to bounce back and forth between me talking and uh, playing clips, so I'm not going to just, you know, I don't know. I'll try to get that set up where I can just play, pause, play, pause, talk, whatever. But in the meantime, again, I have uh, 16 different bullet points. I'm going to go through them. These are the points that Gutekunst said. Number one, he is our quarterback. He's been working, uh, they've been working through this for a while. It may take some time. So again, this is confirmation that something is going on and they're working on it. Doesn't mean it's super dire. And it obviously does point to the fact that Aaron Rodgers at least is keeping the communication open, which is another note that comes up in a little bit. He says, we're going to work towards that in a number of different fronts. So they're trying different things, obviously, because whatever they're trying is not working right now. And he says, I do think he'll play for us again. Now, again, depending on what side of the the aisle you're on, that means different things. If you're on the Rodgers is never coming back train, Gutekunst doesn't seem to agree with you. If you're on the nothing is wrong here train, you're obviously not correct because he's telling us that something is wrong and he's not positive that he's going to come back and play. Point six, he says he is optimistic Um, point seven, we are absolutely not going to trade Aaron Rodgers, And I believe him when he says that a lot of these are kind of iffy, wishy-washy trying to think what to say, but the, we absolutely did not say we were going to trade Rodgers thing was no hesitation. And the, we absolutely will not trade Aaron Rodgers is no hesitation. Again, it seems weird. And it seems like if you can't come to an agreement that the best thing to do would be to trade, but based on the way that Gutekunst answers this question, I do believe him when he says we're not trading Aaron Rodgers. Now, maybe as time goes on, that tune is going to change, but I genuinely believe when he answered this question, he had no intention of trading Aaron Rodgers. That's just my opinion. He says there has been a lot of communication with Aaron over the last six to eight weeks. Um, he said he couldn't commit to saying if Rodgers would participate in voluntary stuff, but says they do want him and will try to work through that. Then the question was posed, why do you think he's going to be back? Here's, what's, here's essentially was his answer. We have a very good football team, a great organization. We're committed to him. The lines of communication have been open, and it's best for Green Bay, and I genuinely believe it's what's best for Aaron Rodgers. So it's not based on positive interactions with Rodgers necessarily. It's based on, I mean, obviously, we got a really good team. Why would he want to go anywhere else? 
which isn't a terrible argument, but if that was the case, we wouldn't be here in the first place, right? So it sounds like that's largely their selling point, and I, I'm assuming that's not really working at this point. Entirely possible Rodgers is just kind of bluffing. Again, if it isn't so much to do with his dissatisfaction with the team and more so to do with what I said about the leverage and about fear that he may be out the door from the Green Bay Packers if he doesn't play up to snuff or gets injured or whatever, and he's just trying to use that MVP thing as leverage, which is smart, then maybe this is just a massive game of chicken and he has no intention of smashing into anybody. He's just going to go as hard as he possibly can to get some more money, some more commitments, some more uh, guarantees, and then he's good. I don't know. I'm just saying words that are possible. There was a question asked about how do you react when your private business is made public? He acknowledged and answered it. So it's not really interesting what he said. It's just the fact that the reports essentially were true, right? They said, here is the reports. You've been keeping this under wraps and now it's been uncovered. How do you deal with that? And he answered the question. Again, confirming that the reports are true. Everything Schefter reported was true. Uh, Point 12, he says, some communication things could have been handled better. He did say he hates uh, that maybe the perception is worse or more being made to be more than what it is. Confirmed that he did get a call after the news broke, one call about Aaron Rodgers, and it was a very brief call. There's later a question that is claiming that Rodgers has said he won't return. Gutekunst never refuted it. Again, he didn't confirm it. He didn't say, oh yeah, he, he told me that too, which why would he? But again, that's one of those questions where it's like, why wouldn't he come out and say that he hasn't heard that? Right, there was, there was a question, I think, on a, a different Gutekunst interview where they said, you know, it's, it's been said that he wants you gone. How does he answer that? He says, I haven't heard that. It hasn't been said, he hasn't said that to me. But yet a question was asked saying, Rogers has said he won't return. And he just says, yeah, you know, we're, you know, we're working through whatever, whatever. He never refuted it. He never said, I've never heard that. To me, that's interesting. And then point 16, as I said, he flat out denies that they told Rogers they were going to trade him. And I believe that. So again, 100% acknowledging that there is an issue, seemingly a relatively big issue, but he also is optimistic. Now, just so you know, this is the much more optimistic um, of the two reports or the two interviews between Gutekunst and Lafleur, because when you, there's still um, him and The Rock, which, again, Gutekunst is much more optimistic than Lafleur is. I'm actually going to play this one because it's very short, but um, this is Brian Gutekunst talking to um, Larry McCarron, and obviously Larry McCarron does not want to have to do this. But it has to be done, so he asks him briefly about it, and Gutekunst answers it in very short order, kind of downplays it, whatever, and then we'll get to Matt LaFleur. So here is Gutekunst talking about what is going on. Hey, everybody. Packers GM Brian Gutekunst joins us to talk about the draft. But, of course, Brian, the 800-pound gorilla in the room, is the Aaron Rodgers situation. Can you shed any light on it? Yeah, you know, I don't want to get into too many specifics, Larry, but I will say this. You know, Aaron is... A huge part of our football team it's exceptionally important uh, you really can't you know he, he gives us the best chance to win week in and week out and we're working through some things and uh, we're optimistic we'll get to the other side so sorry about the music and all that that's just comes with the interview i can't really do anything about that because i got stuff in the background so again more or less downplays it but at the same time acknowledges it for those that are saying that this isn't real he's saying we're working through some stuff and we're optimistic that we're going to be able to work it out again depending on where you are which is what i'm asking you to do stand where you are and see what makes the most sense depending on where you're standing this is either great news because it sounds like there's a good chance he could come back or terrible news that he's saying that there is a chance he will not come back or it sounds about right for where you are which is i don't know what's going on something's going on we'll see what happens which is kind of where I'm saying we all kind of should be. Although I'm, I'm you know, I don't know. It, it's so hard because it depends who you listen to. You listen to Goot and it's like, dude, he's coming back. You listen to LaFleur, it's like, dude, he's gone. You listen to a lot of the reports that are coming after that. It's like, dude, he's 100% gone. Then you listen to the Packers guys and it's like, I think he's coming back. So it's just, it's a big thing that, again, I'm just, I'm just laying it out. You make your own determination. But at least we're going to go through all the information and not just say it's all fake or it's all true or whatever. All right, so now on to, to uh, Matt LaFleur, and there are a couple highlights that I have here that I'm going to play. It's going to take me some time to get them all queued up or whatever, but that's my problem, not your problem, because I do want you to hear um, what he says. And, and bear in mind, remember, when this happened, part of the reason that people were so upset is because they were upset with Rodgers and the fact that he was leaving and, and how sure we were. And I understand about, well, now we learned it's all fake. Well, I think part of the reason we think that is because we forget what 
happened here. Do you remember this interview? And I don't know if it's true or not. Do you remember when it came out that it looked like LaFleur was crying? I mean, his eyes are watery, and he certainly, you know, st- kind of gets choked up in the throat. Maybe it's just a coincidence. I don't know. But um, there's a reason we were all kind of extremely concerned and also kind of upset that this was happening. And the Matt LaFleur interview was a big part of that. So going through a couple of the points, again, I got a couple clips, but some of this I'm just going to tell you what he said. You can go verify if you want for yourself. Point one, he is our quarterback, and I want nothing more than to see him in a Packers uniform. Again, very similar to what Gutekunst said, clearly articulating that there is a problem. He may not be back, but we're hopeful that he will come back. Point two, we want him back. Then question three, and again, this is very important because Lafleur is much more candid about what's going on than Gutekunst was. After he says, I want him back, very good question. I don't remember who said it. My apologies. But he says, that's all well and good. But what if he doesn't want to be back? Here is Matt LaFleur's response to that question. That's all well and good, Matt. But what if he doesn't want to be back here? Yeah, I know. And and I, I, I can't even take my brain to that, that spot right now. So um, I just want to do everything in my power to, to ensure that that doesn't happen. Again, what does that sound like to you? Does that sound like fake news? Does that sound like Schefter lied? Does that sound like these reports aren't true, that he doesn't want to come back? Let me add, j- j- dead serious. Think think through the lens of if you were the coach, how would you answer it? Stand where you are and say, this is what I believe is happening. How do you answer that question? Now, let's pretend, either th- whether this is where you stand or just devil's advocate, Aaron Rodgers has never said he doesn't want to come back. It's a simple contract dispute, and he says, I'm going to be back, but we got to iron out a couple things, and, and we'll see, you know, about either this or that. You know, it's just, it's, it's a simple contract negotiation where we need to iron out a couple details. I want a little bit more, you know, a couple million dollars more. What's the big deal? Do you answer that question that way if that's all it is? What if he doesn't want to come back? Very simple answer. He does. He's articulated it to me that he wants to be back. He wants to be a Packer. We want him to be a Packer. It's a, it's a, you know, we're just trying to work through a couple things. This is being blown way out of proportion. That's how you answer that question. You absolutely do not stand in front of a camera and in front of a microphone and, and shake your head yes and say, yeah, I can't even wrap my head around that, man. I don't even want to go there. I don't even want to think about that possibility right now. I'm just going to do everything in my power to prevent that nightmare from ever happening. That doesn't even make sense if this is a minor contract dispute. Come on, man. Again, let's be serious about this. I'm not saying he's not coming back. I'm not saying he's 100% out the door, but I'm saying we got to be serious. This whole, it's all fake and the media lied. No, I'm sorry. You're setting yourself up for hurt and heartbreak if you're going to keep playing that, that song and dance. Continuing on. There was a question posed. Do you ever wonder what happened to your chemistry, right? And I talk about this all the time. They're constantly talking about culture. They're constantly talking about bringing people in here that have a certain way of being so that we can build a culture and have this chemistry. And they do work hard. And I think they've done a great job. Remember that last year under Mike McCarthy was a nightmare and they came in and it it really got fixed. Now, a lot of that probably had to do with winning. And I'm sure there are some things that are kind of stuffed down that you don't see probably because of the winning. But this, by the way, is the question in which he got choked up. And you can go check it out for yourself if you want. I don't have the, the clip queued up, but he does acknowledge that it is a concern. He says, quote, you certainly, you don't want to take steps backward. Again, acknowledging all of these things, acknowledging that it is a concern as far as the chemistry and, and not only what has happened to our chemistry and what will happen to our chemistry, but acknowledging that we've gone backwards, right? We, we, we've regressed, not progressed. Here is another clip that I have queued up. It's just something that I want you to hear because, again, I want you to hear it in his words and run it through that filter of does this make sense based on exactly where you are at right now. Here's the clip. Well, you know, we're all in this thing together um, in terms of of everybody in this organization is on board. We all want him back as our quarterback. Uh, You know, there's no doubt about it. He's like like I said earlier. I'm, I believe he's the greatest of all time. And so anytime you have a guy of that caliber, of course, not only as the player, but as the person and, and as the leader in that locker room, of course you want him leading your team. And again, the only reason I played that is to kind of hammer home the same point. He did not say he is our quarterback. He said we want him to be our quarterback, and that is a very big distinction. And he says things similar to that several times, acknowledging that there is no guarantee that he will be the quarterback. 
I feel like we've fairly solidly cemented that. In fact, here's the next clip. Hey, Matt, I, I completely respect you don't want to share details of your conversation with Aaron. Uh, but in general, have, have those conversations led you to be in any way hopeful or optimistic that, that he will, or that there's room there for him to come back, that, that he's open to the idea? Well, I'll always remain hopeful and optimistic and, and certainly we'll always welcome him back with, with open arms. Uh, he knows exactly how not only myself, but, but our staff and our players feel about him. And, um, you know, like I said before, I just can't imagine him not being in a Green Bay Packer uniform. Again, you're the head coach. Sit there with what, how do you answer that question based on what you think is going on? The question was very simple. Has anything come up in your conversations that has given you the impression that he has any desire to come back? He didn't just say yes. He said, well, we'll always welcome him back. There's always going to be a place for him here. He's talking as though he's already gone. Am I wrong in that? There's always going to be a place for him here if he decides to come back is essentially how he answered that question. He knows exactly how we feel about him. He knows we want him here. I'm just saying, is he just horrible at answering questions? Is that the trope we're going to go with? Well, I mean, he just he didn't he doesn't know what he's talking. About. He's just an idiot. I don't know. He, Gutekunst does the negotiations. He's he's probably just listening to the lying media Schefter, and he doesn't actually know. Come on, again, just be just be reasonable. What do we think makes the most sense? What makes the most sense given these answers? I'm saying he does not sound very um, optimistic. Here's the final quote from that talking about the next man up. Whoever it happens to be is going to have to be ready, obviously talking about Jordan Love. Chris Roth. Hey, Matt, I'm not trying to be clever here, but you, as a head coach, you say you can't imagine it. You don't want your brain to go there, but you you have to get your brain to the point. If he isn't here, how do you get somebody else right now? You only have one ready to play if necessary. How does that change what you do and what's going on right now with your with you with Jordan? Well, you know, in the, in the game of football, I, I think any time that you're w- with with every position, but specifically the quarterback position, when you have when you're the next man, you're preparing like the starter, and so that's the mentality we take. It is a next man up mentality, and we know, regardless of who out who's out there on the field, like. The standards and expectations, they don't change. So we're going to prepare every player in our program like they're the starter. So obviously that one's a lot more flimsy in terms of there being anything kind of concrete. But again, it's it's not like a refutation or, or any kind of a solid. There's no definitive stance of Aaron Rodgers will be our quarterback. There's nothing like that. It's if Rodgers is our guy, he'll be ready. If Love is our guy, he'll be ready. That's the nature of what we do here. Right. And, and again, it's yeah, you're just ask, answering the question. But at no point do we hear anybody come out and just be like, look, just stop. Just stop. This is this is this is nonsense. The media is making this up. Why do you keep asking me this? There's nothing here. He's never said he doesn't want to come back. He's expressed that he wants to be here. He, he uh, nothing. None of that. I wonder why. Anyways, I told you this is going to be a long one. Uh, we just got through that portion of interviews and whatnot. We got kind of a decent amount to go here. Um I think the second part will go a lot faster, but why don't we go ahead and take a break here? I've got many, many thank yous to hand out, and I'm glad to say we actually did reach our goal, and we're going to start up another goal, um, because why not? But first of all, very, very big thank you to Ray Baca, Sean, Dennis Roche, Different Sean, Adam Kloss, and Clinton, um, all of whom joined in the last uh, two days. I may have said thank you to a couple of you guys, but I like to go back just in case I missed you, because who knows? But as a result of the four new patrons that I got yesterday, we have cracked the goal. And I just want to offer up a sincere thank you to all of you for jumping on board. It's, as I've said a thousand times, pretty overwhelming, um, the amount of support that I get to be able to sit here and just talk Packers with you. Uh, The new goal, and it's a lofty one, wasn't my idea, but as soon as I heard it, I'm like, yep, that's the kind of completely unrealistic nonsense that I refuse to not be a part of. How's that for a double negative? The goal will be to go from 200 to 300 patrons by the start of the season, which I believe is about 125 days away. There is going to be a giveaway, though, and it's not just for new people that join. It will be uh, for the patrons. And I want to do this more often just as a way to kind of continue to reward patrons to be doing giveaways and stuff. But it's, of course, going to be incentive-based. But the plan as of right now 
if we can crack this goal, and I think we can. I mean, again, the last couple of days have been pretty massive, and it's still we're still talking about a pretty small percentage of the total audience. If we can get there, I'm going to give you three choices. Number one is the newest Madden game, which I believe is 21. I don't know. I don't play, but I'll get you that. Number two is a PFF subscription. Number three is a Game Pass subscription. Those are the three options that I'll have available. If you if we crack that, I will pick one winner. That winner will get to pick from one of those three things, and I will just buy that for you. But uh, just so you know, there was also um, some research that I did today, and I needed to pay for a subscription. And I was thinking, I don't know if I really want to buy a subscription. And then it dawned on me, this is exactly why you have Patreon. I have Patreon so I can get PFF. I have Patreon so I can get PFF College. I have Patreon so I can get Game Pass. I have Patreon so I can buy a subscription so that I have all 22 film so that we can watch college film together with, which, with all 22 film. I have it so that I can get subscriptions to Sports Illustrated and buy a bunch of draft guides. And I can go read Tyler Dunn's stuff when people ask me, hey, did you read the Tyler Dunn thing? And I say, no, guess what? I'm going to buy it because that's what Patreon is for. You're supporting me so that I can give you the best possible podcast. And that's, that's sort of just feels like an obligation. That's why you all join so that I can provide this to you. So that's what I did. So thank you to all the patrons who provide me with all that. There is, there, there literally is no podcast without, if I don't have these resources, I don't have a daily, uh, con- I can't give you daily content. I just can't. So thank you to all of you. Patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy for a dollar a day. And again, remember, you can listen to each and every podcast early and ad free on Patreon if you sign up. So we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news. So don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. Uh, Before we get into more day two type interviews or whatever, it is worth noting that he was at the Kentucky Derby that day. um, And although he did give an interview, he gave an interview to some guy from Australia who had no, apparently he felt no need to ask about what was going on, probably because he had no idea. I don't know. But that was the only interview he gave. However, apparently he did make some kind of a comment um, briefly, not on camera, but kind of off camera about he was upset that the news had leaked out again sort of signaling, well, two things. Number one, he didn't leak this. That is via Schefter. That is also via Rogers, who said he was upset that this got leaked. But again, also now from Rogers saying, essentially, I didn't want this to get out, as well as all his teammates saying, if you knew Rogers, you know he has no desire for this kind of stuff to get out. Plus, you look at the backlash, it makes a lot of sense that this uh, would have nothing to do with Rogers wanting this to happen. Anyways, there is an a... Uh, an additional interview with Brian Gutekunst. This was after the draft, and this is after things had cooled off, so there wasn't really a ton to talk about. There was really just one question that I took a note on, um, and it was essentially that Aaron has not communicated to him that he will not return if Gut is there, right? So there was the whole thing that uh, Rodgers doesn't come back as long as Gut's there. Now, it doesn't mean it's not true. Gutekunst just said, not that I know of, essentially. So even leaving that possibility open, but he also is just not wanting to speak for Rodgers. So it's kind of a nothing thing. But it's all we really heard about it from Goot's post-draft press conference. 
Then we get, again, Matt LaFleur, who's a little bit more on the downer side, talking to Rock. He's doing his one-on-one interview, so I'm going to play that for you now. Buddy, we are joined by head coach Matt LaFleur, and Matt, thank you and welcome. And this is our first opportunity to talk with you since the Aaron Rodgers situation broke. Your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's pretty disappointing considering all the success we've had over these past two seasons, you know, two straight NFC Championship games. And I know they didn't end the way we would all like, but uh, the fact that we're in this spot um, certainly is uh, not what I want. And especially when you're talking about the league MVP and, and all the great moments we've had together. And, you know, hopefully we will resolve this and he'll be back in a Green Bay Packer uniform. If I'm being honest, this is one of the biggest indictments that I've heard this whole time. I don't know if indictment is the right word, but... Listen to the words that he said. He's very disappointed that we're in this situation. We've been to back-to-back NFC championships. It sucks that we're here right now. That it came to this. Came to what? It's just a minor contract dispute. It's just a minor thing. He's going to be right back. Again, it just it just doesn't quite fit. You know what I mean? When you get that puzzle, and sometimes you get a puzzle piece, and it's like, that clearly doesn't fit. And then sometimes you get that one where it's like, I think that's right. And then you look at it and it's like the bottom doesn't quite line up. And you almost kind of like push it like, ah, I think that's got to be it. Like it's just, they cut it wrong or something. It's just, it's, it doesn't quite fit the narrative of this is small. The when Matt LaFleur's talks, it sounds big. It sounds more like Rodgers is out the door and they're trying to pull him back. Not like they're facing toward each other, trying to come to some agreement, trying to get to the point where Rodgers is like, I desperately want to come back. You just got to meet me a little bit more. It looks like Rodgers is out the door, has expressed his desire to leave, and the Packers are trying to pull him back in. And again, the communication lines are open, meaning he's at least taking their phone calls and communicating with them. But if, from Matt LaFleur, it sounds, this everything he says makes more sense in the context of they're trying to pull him back as opposed to Rodgers is trying to come back. All right, now, so that's sort of, Sort of phase one, or I guess phase two, if we take all that other Jeopardy stuff into account, but whatever. Phase two now is when we get into a little bit more speculation. This is where the reporters come out. So we had Schefter with his initial report, which has been confirmed. Now we've got guys doing digging, and this is where it gets a little bit muddled. You've got guys like Bob McGinn who are calling their sources and getting information. So we've got sort of that telephone game thing going on where people go out, they talk to people who talk to people who have talked to people who know people who are talking about body language or, you know, I'm just, I'm exaggerating, but it gets a little bit iffy. But again, take the information for what it's worth and and without just completely dismissing it because they're media members or whatever, let's let's just look at it. And you don't have to believe it if you don't want to, but again, take everything into account. This has clearly been confirmed by everybody, including the team, right? So let's at least be honest about that part. This is an article from The Athletic by Bob McGinn, who obviously covered the Packers for a very long time. I know a lot of people don't like him, discredited, whatever. Here is what he said in this article. He says, first of all, again, Adam Schefter reported it. He decides he needs to get on the horn, check with his sources. He says, my reporting confirms that of ESPN's Adam Schefter, who on Thursday cited sources that Aaron Rodgers is disgruntled and wants out. Again, You don't have to believe it, but that is what he is hearing. So when he called and he said, hey, what's going on? What he heard back is Rodgers wants out. Now you get to the second part of it. Again, this isn't Schefter, and this also isn't Bob McGinn. This is Charles Robinson. He goes on to say, "Um, and that of Yahoo's Charles Robinson, who on Saturday cited a source from Rodgers camp saying that the quarterback won't return as long as Brian Gutekunst remains the general manager. Now let me read that again because I... Trying to over-explain it, I think I cut something out. Let me read it again and see if you pick up on it. My reporting confirms that of ESPN, Adam Schefter, who Thursday cited sources that Rodgers is disgruntled and wants out, and that of Yahoo's Charles Robinson, who on Saturday cited a source from Rodgers' camp saying that quarterback won't return as long as Brian Gutekunst remains general manager of the team. Two very important things on that. I understand. No, it's, it's, it's garbage. This is lying media. Okay, two very important things here. Number one, Charles Robinson reported it, Bob McGinn called around to ask if it's true, and he confirmed it. Second important point, who on Saturday cited a source from Rogers' camp, meaning the source, who is unnamed, comes from Rogers' camp. Again, could be a lie, but it also sets themselves up for failure if people could just easily come out and refute it. And again, nobody has. Brian Gutekunst says he hasn't heard that directly, but that's not a refutation because obviously Brian Gutekunst hasn't been told to his face. But apparently, 
two people now independently have called around and have, have a contact from within Aaron Rodgers' camp that says he will not come back as long as Gutekunst is there. Take it for what it's worth. You don't have to believe it if you don't want to. It is what it is. Again, lines of communication apparently are open. I don't know. Then we've got another report. Now, this one, this, this source has a name. And again, if this isn't true, very easily this person can refute it. Here's the next paragraph. As strange as it might seem, Agent David Dunn. Interestingly enough, when I said that Aaron Rodgers did an interview um, with that Australian reporter, he said, I didn't even know this. He was talking about, you know, they're like, oh, who do you usually come with? And he's like, oh, you know, it's this, that, or the other. He mentioned that his agent, David Dunn, is actually his best friend. I didn't know that, but that's what he said in that interview. Let me continue on with this paragraph. As strange as it might seem, agent David Dunn has said that the straw that broke the camel's back from his client was the team's decision to release Jay Kumro in early September, less than 24 hours after Rogers said on Sirius XM radio, how much he valued having the wide receiver on the roster. That's another just r- random report that's out there, but this comes from David Dunn. And again, if it's not true, David Dunn could easily come out and refute it. So again, it's, they're clearly not just flat out lying. It could be that some of it's true and some of it's false, but they're putting a lot on the line by just making stuff up when it could easily be refuted. And none of it has been. Two separate people from two separate organizations with different sets of sources have confirmed that Rodgers wants out and Rodgers isn't coming coming back as long as Gutekunst is there. I'm just, I'm just giving you that information. Do with it what you will. It goes on a little bit more explaining, you know, his disgust with the whole um, uh, Kumaro thing, including a quote in November where Rodgers told a reporter he didn't want to lobby for wide receivers anymore because, last because quote, the last time I did that, they ended up in Buffalo. So again, he's jaded about it. It goes on to say, in addition to the Kumaro cut, Rodgers appears to have a lengthy list of grievances against Gutekunst. They include the GM's decision to trade up to draft uh, Jordan Love one year ago, the GM's decision... Uh, not to inform him of the trade and selection before it happened and the team's decision to not draft a deep crop of wide receivers in 2020. He goes on to kind of speculate that Tom Brady is is some, but I'm not going to talk about that because that's not from a source or anything. He's just saying, obviously he's watched it and that's probably enforcing it or or informing some of his decisions. But that's, again, that's completely him just, um, I don't want to say making it up, but speculating. Now, back to the sources. This is via Bob McGinn. According to sources, Rodgers has mocked Gutekunst in group chats with his teammates in Green Bay by referring to GM as Jerry Krause. Now, this is via sources, and by the way, I'm going to read another article later that confirms this via a teammate that is currently playing for the Packers and says, oh, it's much worse than that. And also goes on to say, some people, well, maybe he meant it as a compliment. No, no, the sources are saying he's mocking Gutekunst. Maybe you don't think it's a big deal. Oh, everybody mocks their boss, whatever. I'm not going to get into that again. I already went on a tirade about how that's nonsense for a, for a leader to be doing that. It's petty, it's silly, it's all that stuff. But it's here. Again, you can choose to believe all media is a bunch of liars or whatever, but so far, I don't think anything except that one report by Trey Wingo has been come out as being a complete lie. Now, here's another report. Again, this is the one I'm very skeptical about, but nobody has refuted it, not even Rogers' camp. Not that anybody's really said anything from their camp, or at least apparently they've said things behind closed doors, but not really publicly. But again, it's kind of risky to make this up if it's not true, and why would you? Why would you just make up something randomly? I don't understand, like, the certain things make sense to make up, right? Like, if, if you report that the Packers said they were going to trade them, and, um, you know, that's what's causing all this, and it's about to get super crazy. Yeah, you know how many tweets and, and likes and all that stuff you're going to get for that? A billion. But randomly throwing a piece about how they, they made him a, a contract offer, and that's fake, that just doesn't make sense. But here's what it says. In recent months, according to sources, plural, the Packers have offered to make the 37-year-old Rodgers the NFL's highest paid quarterback. That's not a restructuring. That is an extension and a massive pay raise. Those overtures were turned aside. The fractured relationship between quarterback and team seems to have little or nothing to do with money. This, by the way, as I said, was confirmed by his teammates. Not necessarily the contract part, but you got guys who are trying to make the case that, of course, he's coming back, coming out saying, oh, this isn't about money. Which, again, my question then is, what the heck is this about then? Oh, he doesn't want Gutekunst fired. No, no, no. No, no, it's not about money. He doesn't want money. Okay, what are we working with here? He wants respect. Okay, he got it. The, the, the Packers have been groveling for months, literally months. They've committed to him. They said they're not trading him. They said he's our quarterback. They've said all these things a million times. They've never wavered or hesitated on that for a second. What do you want? Trade love? No. What else? I, I Again, I don't understand it. 
There's other interesting details in here that aren't necessarily pertinent, but I'll read it anyways because it is interesting information. Uh, if the Packers sit on Rodgers for the entire season, he would be out his $14.7 million base salary and $500,000 workout bonus for 2021. His contract, which runs through 2023, also contained a roster bonus of $6.8 million for being on the roster as of March 20th. That's all money he would be out and we would get back. It then goes on in the next paragraph to speculate his value. It says, based on reports of what the Bears offered the Seahawks for quarterback Russell Wilson, 32 um, his age is 32. The market value for Rodgers could be three first round draft picks, if not more. Again, not really pertinent to what we're talking about, but interesting. And, and, you know, so there you go. There's also a quote from a quote, longtime friend of Aaron Rodgers that says, once he gets something in his head, he usually doesn't back down. And that's been a common theme from several people. Again, not necessarily the trio of his close friends who have been very positive about this. They have nothing but nice things to say about Rodgers. But most of the other people that when they talk about Rodgers, they say he is unbelievably headstrong and he is not going to back down on this. Um, I believe it was the same friend goes on to say there would be a 2% chance Rodgers would ever play for the Packers again. Again, those numbers are speculative and they're all over the place depending on who you ask. Now, again, it's, it's, it's funny because, again, the, the people who desperately want him back and believe that this is all fake and everything, they point to three of those friends and say, see, they're all optimistic. But they, and they say, well, and those are the people we should trust the most because they talk to him. First of all, Lafleur and Gutekunst talk to him also. Second of all, um, Brett Favre talked to him. He had a different take. This guy, who's a friend, has talked to him, has, says 2%. So let's not cherry pick. So that was it, essentially, from McGinn and, I guess, Charles Robinson as well, as far as uh, that whole situation. But then we get an article from um, Tyler Dunn. Tyler Dunn has his own website. It's another subscription thing. I explained that already. Um, but his article, and he's ri- written two. The first one wasn't a, a whole lot. It was more or less his ability to vent, similar to the way that I vented. And he he basically parroted, I'm not going to say he parroted me, because obviously he has his own opinion. But if you want to read it, it's basically what my podcast was when I was very angry at Aaron Rodgers and said he can go pound sand and we should just move on if this is going to be his attitude. Tyler Dunn basically said exactly that. It wasn't a whole lot of inside sources. It was just, he's a big baby and whatever. This one is a little bit more substantive. The article was written 11 hours ago, let the Jordan Love era begin in Green Bay. I'm going to go through this because, again, it's inside sources. You can call them lies, you can call them whatever you want, but I'm going to give you the information so at least you have it, you know who said it, and you can either believe it or not. And again, don't care what you can, what you believe. I'll tell you what I believe, you believe whatever you want to believe, it's fine. But again, the other thing I want to point out, and I've said this before, I was very pro Mike McCarthy for a very long time until the evidence became massively overwhelming that I can't defend it anymore. Same with our defensive coordinator, um, Dom Caper, same with Ted Thompson. I'm now at that point with Aaron Rodgers, not not just in terms of his, ca- his character, which I have flipped on, but in terms of there's obviously something very serious here. Because literally every single thing, with the exception of like James Jones, who says we're going to go 16-0 every year, um, Everybody pretty much has said that this is serious. And John Kuhn, who says his gut says 75%, not based on anything he's actually talked to Rogers about. He just says his gut, but whatever. So it's not 100%, but it's it's like 95% of people who are looking into this and talking to people are saying this is pretty serious. Now, again, I'm going to try to skim this because Tyler Dunn is very anti rogers And I don't really want that to bleed through any more than it needs to. So I'm just going to try to find the important notes here. I will point out that a lot of this has to do with the fact, again, that Aaron Rodgers is very headstrong and that this is about getting back at the organization, et cetera, et cetera. But again, that's largely, I don't know if that's really speculation, but again, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll skip that and see what we can do. We'll skip Tyler Dunn's assertions and we'll, we'll listen to this player. And again, this is a current player. I'm just going to read the, the beginning part of this. It says, the best way one Packers teammate, again, a current teammate, can describe the past week's events is that it's the execution of of a diabolical plan, and he, for one, is enjoying the show. This is not necessarily Tyler Dunn. This is the explanation from a current player of the Green Bay Packers. He goes on to say, to him, it's not that complicated in Aaron Rodgers' mind. The quarterback is, and I'm going to take out any colorful language, upset the team drafted Jordan Love and now wants the organization to pay. Rodgers wants to, quote, expose the Green Bay Packers. Again, this is, and maybe that's fake. Maybe he has no inside sources. There is no player and the whole thing's fake. I don't think that's true, but you believe whatever you want. This is now a quote from that current Green Bay Packers player. Aaron Rodgers is an intelligent, trolling, petty mother effer. I took it out the best I could. I don't know how else to change that. Says this teammate as a compliment 
who asked to remain anonymous because the Packers still employ him. I guess that doesn't necessarily mean he's a player. He could be, but let's face it, he probably is. Otherwise, it's pretty obvious. Do we have any players that are like wide receiver coaches or anything? It says teammates, so never mind. He goes on to say, quote, He's going to get the last laugh. He's going to make you look effing stupid for disrespecting him. As a front office, why haven't you anticipated this? Why are you getting blindsided? And this is something that other people have said. I think Holmgren came out with a quote about this. You know Aaron Rodgers is petty. You know he acts like this. How could you let it get like this? You know that if you cross Aaron Rodgers, he's going to bury you. Now, personally, I'm still not mad at Gutekunst. I mean, I guess you should have seen it coming. You shouldn't have. I, I just, I don't buy that because the the character of a person who acts that way, I just can't get mad at Gutekunst. It's like, nah, I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, you maybe should have done something different, but it's sort of the whole blaming the victim thing, you know? It's like, hey, you knew a, a rapist lived in this neighborhood. You shouldn't have been dressing like that. I mean, technically that's true, but still, I think we're focusing on the wrong thing here. This player goes on to say, quote, I'm not saying Aaron is evil, but this is like a criminal master pl- mastermind plan. This, this is a current Green Bay Packer playing, uh, player, player saying this. He goes on to say, and I'm, I'm kind of reading it verbatim because it's, it's according to him, sources. Welcome everyone to the number one storyline of the NFL offseason written and directed by the 2020 NFL MVP. It's not going away either. Multiple sources continue to maintain they believe Rodgers will not play another down for the Packers. This teammate uses an analogy of water boiling in a pot, saying the water's spilling out and there's nothing the Packers can do about it. Current Green Bay Packer player saying this. I know James Jones like talks to him on the phone once in a while and like they're friends and all that. I, you know, whatever. Believe whatever you want to believe. It's all fake. Media's fake. Got it. Understood. One former member of the Packers front office, so this is a different person. Again, multiple sources. This is a different source. One former member of the Packers front office is all but certain Rodgers will either be traded or retire. Quote, put it this way. They'd have to fire everybody, this source says. Quote, he is dug in. They'd have to make him a freaking owner of the team. This is a quote. The sense I get is this dude just wants control. Then he goes on to cite that the Packers offered to make him the highest paid quarterback in the NFL, and he refused. Now, that's obviously talking about the um, article that I just cited by Bob McGinn of The of the Athletic. If you don't believe that, then fine. Then it's just a fake art- article reporting on a fake article, but whatever. Just understand that if that's true, there's almost no way this is getting fixed. What else can you possibly do to get Aaron Rodgers back if you offered to make him the highest paid? Do you know how much quarterbacks are getting Do you know how much Pat Mahomes is getting paid right now? Oh, my goodness. Any conversation that could take place most likely already has. This isn't about money anymore, it seems. This cannot be about winning either, considering the talent in Green Bay. This is exactly the point that I was making. What is it about now? Rather, this is what we meant Monday in writing, when you're out, you're out. I think that's the other article that is just him being angry. Rodgers has zero problem eliminating people from his life, and it appears the Packers are being shown the door. Again, it's kind of his negative jab at Rodgers, but, you know, I'm going to finish the paragraph. So this is the part two where... Again, this is back to the source. I believe this is the same teammate, could be a different teammate. It just says a teammate. It says, and I'm kind of skipping over a lot of stuff, but after confirming that Rodgers did enjoy mocking Gutekunst as Jerry Krause, the deceased Chicago Bulls GM, harshly cast as the villain in The Last Dance, one teammate who found the comparison hilarious, so he, he received this text, mes- text message from Rodgers, thought it was hilarious, assured us that's not even the worst of it. So, again... You can believe it's all fake if you want. I think that's silly. You have Tyler Dunn talking to current and former players and staff, and one of the current players, maybe it's the same one that he talked about earlier, maybe it's a different one, said he received that exact text messages, text message, thought it was hilarious, and said, dude, that's not even the half of it. This guy has been going hard at Gutekunst. I added that last little bit, but that's, that's clearly implied here. So the rest of this article goes on to fawn all over um, Jordan Love, and I'll be honest, I loved it. I loved every second of it. I dive more into it if I, um, I mean, we just, we have more to cover. We're already an hour and six minutes in. I know I kind of promised people that I would talk a little bit about. It. We'll probably maybe focus on that tomorrow. Maybe talk a little bit about Jordan Love and what, what he, you know, just a lot of quotes. And, and also, I mean, even Tyler Dunn says, you know, obviously the Packers loved him because you got essentially Brian Gutekunst put his career on the line for this guy. Now, I'll be completely honest, since I've been speculating this whole time anyways, I'm speculating the Packers are terrified of Jordan Love right now. I think that they know pretty confidently that he's not ready. That's the impression that I'm getting. Um, Could be wrong. I I just feel like they think that he needs more time, probably because he does. He was a developmental quarterback, and he didn't have any time to develop last year. 
And I just watched today the JT O'Sullivan, I think is his name, the quarterback coach or whatever, the quarterback something on YouTube. Um, his breakdown on Jordan Love. And essentially, it's like this guy's got all the talent in the world. I mean, he's basically got anything Aaron Rodgers and Pat Mahomes have from a physical standpoint, this kid can do it. But the mental part is clearly not there yet. Um, so there's going to be a lot of growing pains. And I think year one in, you know, not talking about rookie year, but actual year one as a quarterback is probably going to be really rough. But I, I, I still think they love him. And, and he goes on to kind of fawn on him. But as far as the Rodgers stuff, it's mostly done. So I think I'm just going to leave that alone. Actually, you know what? I don't know if it's done. Let me let me check. I can't remember now. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of character stuff here, and I don't, I don't really want to get into it. It's about how he's petty. Uh, kind of dives a little bit more. I mean, he obviously, Tyler Dunn that did that, that kind of hit piece a long time ago with sources saying stuff he did. He kind of adds to that little petty stuff that he did, how he would, like, pick on Mike McCarthy. And, again, I, whatever. Let me comb it quickly to see if there's anything relevant to this. It does say, fast forward to today, not much has changed. Now it's the GM of the team, Rogers mocks. Krause themes text may be playful and harmless and even a way for guys to rally together like the Bulls did in 1998. Yet small acts like this can also add up to prove toxic over time. Every team has a breaking point. The Packers who won one ring with Rodgers could declare once and for all this isn't worth the headache. He, he also goes on, like I said, like the player said, like uh, I think Holmgren said, this is an all-time grudge holder. If Rodgers won't let McCarthy forget about that Smith pick, he is unafraid to label two of his best patch catchers ever irrelevant and render them pariah. Then what the heck did the Packers expect when they drafted the heir apparent? No, Rodgers isn't going to merely whistle while he works. He masterminds a plan that now has the shrapnel hitting everyone back at 1265 Lombardi Avenue. Now, there's another quote here. It says, quote, this is from a, well, I'll just read it because it says what it is. I think Aaron is being extremely childish, one former Packers front office member says. Is there stuff Gutekunst could have done better? 100%. But Aaron is so petty. He's so petty. This, that's where I cannot understand how they make this mistake, knowing how petty he is. you got to be a little smart with how you manage him. To say, hey, Aaron, we're going to do what we, uh, what we do, and you have to fall in line because this is the Packers. That's pretty shocking, and they don't know that dude. In other words, saying, if, if you think he's just going to go with this, you're stupid because, as he said, he's incredibly petty. Now, I know that makes a lot of you guys angry. No, how dare you? This is all fake. Okay, whatever. The teammates are fake. The, all the, whatever. It's just, come on, man. That's, again, I'm just saying, just try to be somewhat realistic about this. He goes on to say, quote, it's a crappy situation because Aaron is not going to handle this like an adult at all. This is a quote from a former Packers front office member. This might even be Holmgren, because this, this sounds almost identical to what Holmgren said publicly. I, I have, actually have a very strong suspicion that this is from Mike Holmgren saying this exact stuff, that Aaron Rodgers is extremely petty. Here's another little interesting thing. Again, take it for what it, what it is, but it, it's from a teammate. It says, Rodgers does love offensive coordinator Nate Hackett. One teammate describes it as a gooey gaga kind of love in meetings, too. It's genuine, real, but LaFleur, this player who's unabashedly pro Rodgers in the impasse, says the quarterback merely, quote, tolerates LaFleur, and that Rodgers grew especially frustrated in 19 due to the new coaches overthinking the offense instead of just letting him play. Granted, this relationship is not nearly as bad as the quarterback's prior one with McCarthy, but it's not as spectacular as everyone makes it seem publicly. Again, take it or leave it, but there you go. This is from a player. It's another quote. Says a teammate, quote, You think he'll have a come-to-Jesus meeting and think, Oh, I want to spend one more year with Robert Tunyon and Devontae Adams. You think that's going to make everything better? We're in Green Bay. He's been here for 16 years, so not only were you whatever because you lost Aaron, but now he's going to retire? You better get something in a good trade. In other words, the guy's been here for 16 years. If this was just about Tunyon and Devontae and, like, I just want to play with my friends, we wouldn't be here right now. There's also a very funny quote in here from Rodgers that um, is so unbelievably hypocritical. It's, it's ridiculous. Here's a quote from in January from Aaron Rodgers. Quote, I talk a lot about an attitude of gratitude, and that's something that really means a lot to me, Rodgers said. It's kind of rooted in the understanding that things aren't happening to you. They're just happening. And when you change that perspective just slightly, you take out the opportunity for the victim mentality to set in, which is associated with the excuse, the woe is me, a lot of I statements. I've really tried to eliminate that from my mindset. <laughs> okay. Gratitude. Where's the gratitude? I don't see any gratitude. It says it means a lot to him. It's rooted in the understanding that things aren't happening to you. They're just happening. I think that's a great perspective, except this is coming from the guy that when they cut Kumaro, he says, well, you're doing that just to spite me. Come on, man. I mean, this is, this is crazy. 
again, I don't want to try to narrate too much, but I mean, I, I just, I don't, I don't know what to do with this information. It's, listen, here, here's what it is. It's either all completely made up and it's a giant conspiracy that has been going on since he, literally since he graduated college, that is out to get Aaron Rodgers. The narrative that he's egotistical, that he holds a grudge, that he's got a constant chip on his shoulder, all the things that teammates and everybody have said about him since day one, it's all a giant, massive lie and a conspiracy, which I don't know how we get to the point where he's trying to force his way off the team if it's not true, but whatever, you can dance around that one. Or it's true. I don't really see a middle ground. And I'm I, again, I'm just not buying the massive conspiracy. Some of this stuff is not true. Some of the sources are not necessarily true. But w when you have a guy saying, I'm talking to a current teammate and here's what he said, that's different than um, Trey Wingo getting some nonsense source from nowhere who said something that's not true or heard something that is not correct. This is Tyler Dunn saying, I'm talking to a player on the green. That's just a flat out lie. If he's a lot, I mean, this is, this isn't like a misunderstanding or I heard from a, a, from a guy who heard from a guy who heard from a guy who talked to the barber or the cause, cousin of the brother. This is, I'm talking to a current, he's flat out lying if this is true. And again, this stuff can get refuted. He said that this player said, I was one of the recipients of that text message and it was much worse than that. Why doesn't one of the teammates come out and say, uh, I was one of the recipients of the text message. It didn't get worse than that. And he was, he was just joke like it was never meant to be anything, you know, anything bad. Nobody's refuting anything. Is that weird to you? Again, th there's been like one thing that has been refuted. And, and as soon as it came out, it was utterly refuted and nobody else corroborated it. You never saw Tyler Dunn, um, Schefter, Ian Rappaport, Bob McGinn. You never saw any of these guys corroborate when they say, I called and confirmed. They never called and, or, or I'm sure they called, but they never put in their articles. I called about whether or not Rogers was getting traded and it was true. None of them corroborated that story. It's one random guy out there who said one thing, and that's the only thing that's been rebutted, and it's not in any of these other articles because these guys are calling around, they're checking with their sources, and they're finding out what's true and what's not. Just like when Schefter initially said, I called around to find out what's going on, somebody said that uh, somebody made an offer, there was no offer because he actually has sources and he's actually calling out. He's not a phony like Trey Wingo apparently is. He actually has sources. He called and he's like, yeah, they called. They didn't actually make an offer though. Not one of these things that I have read to you outside of Trey Wingo's thing has been refuted. Nothing. Not from Rogers camp, not from the Packers, not from anybody. Doesn't mean it's 100% true, but it's a little weird, isn't it? It's not hard to refute any of this stuff. Now, you can refute the claims that this was all done by Rogers to spite the Packers, but that was never done by any of these guys. That was just speculation that was just brewing out there. I bet that this is why it happened, da 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 And even Schefter said he was the one confirming that that's not the case because he's the guy that actually talks to people, actually knows what's going on, and he's talking about speculation. And he said a lot of times when people like to guess where these things come from, they guess wrong because they don't actually know what they're talking about. So it's kind of a straw man argument, and again, there's a lot of conflation. You're taking random people who are speculating, I bet this is why it happened, and then attributing that to reporters when, in fact, none of that was actually reported. At least not that I saw, not in anything that I read. Maybe there's some random people who picked up on it, or at least said that some people are claiming. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I'm. I don't see it anywhere. Anyways, from there we finally get what is considered to be a glimmer of hope, right? That that was sort of the ultimate downswing. So there's the initial report, which is he kind of wants out, but we're not sure. Then you hear from Gutekunst and Lafleur, where it's like Gutekunst is basically making it sound like we're working through some stuff. It's not great, but I think we're going to get through it. LaFleur is like, look, this this really sucks, and I'm not happy, and I'm sad, and I don't know what to do, and hopefully if, if he wants to come back, it's welcome. So it's kind of like kind of gauging how serious this is. Then you get to Bob McGinn and Ch Charles something or another and Tyler Dunn, and it's like, dude, this sounds bad. Like, he just wants out-out. But then we kind of get uh, A.J. Hawk and John Kuhn and uh, James Jones. I want to go with John Kuhn first because I didn't get the whole thing. And actually, if you want to get a full breakdown of what he said actually you know what we, we've we we're running on an hour and a half we might as well just go find it i'm gonna i'm gonna skip the espn clip that i have here and i'm gonna pull up uh um mr basarski and i'm gonna use him as my official source because uh why not it's kind of fun when you can make your friends like the official sources right but he kind of went through and and took down what john coon said in his entirety so i'll, I'll let him fill you in on what that was 
All right, so now let's dive into what John Kuhn said on CBS Sports Radio yesterday, and I'm pretty much going to read it verbatim. He said, I've talked with Aaron Rodgers. He's conflicted because this man loves to play the game of football, and this man loves to be a Green Bay Packer. And this man truly sees careers. He's watched friends leave. He's watched all these things play out in front of his eyes. He's seeing some situations that weren't finished the way they should have. He's trying to take his own destiny within his own hands. Then John Kuhn went on to add, I truly believe Aaron wants to come back to Green Bay, but he doesn't want to do it on a lame duck contract. Even though there's three years on his contract, if you really look at the terms of it, it pretty much sets up for a clean break at the end of the 2021 season. I think he wants more insurance that he's going to be the long-term starting quarterback option for the Green Bay Packers, and that I believe is something that would intrigue him into making amends with the team and come back this season. So obviously this is a much more optimistic approach or thought behind things. Now, I do want to point something out, and and it's fair to say that this is a lot of, even Tyler Dunn's article with the people that are on the team and everything else, they don't know specifically what's going on. I'm going to say John Kuhn is included in that, and here's why. The quote said, I truly believe that he wants to be back. He didn't say he told me he wants to go back because Aaron Rodgers didn't tell him he wants to go back. He's speaking as a very close friend who knows him as a human being and 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 obviously has a better perspective than I do or anybody else does. Well, not anybody. Again, other people that are current teammates or whatever have different takes on this. But John Kuhn, without having firsthand knowledge, does believe that Rodgers wants to come back and believes that there is a, went on to say, 75% chance that he will be back. Right? So optimism. Again, he doesn't exactly know. Sounds like from what he's saying, it's about money or, or at least some kind of insurance, which makes sense because that's what we've all been saying for a while now, right? Well, yeah, just he just wants assurances that he's going to be back, except there's also reports that they tried to make him the highest paid quarterback and he said no. I don't see how both of these things can be true. Now, again, I'm kind of leaning more toward the reports, even though I, I understand the skepticism because it's like, well, on one hand, you have John Kuhn. On the other hand, you have unnamed sources. That's a good point. However, we have John Kuhn who doesn't know and people who have followed up with sources that do know. Supposedly, right? It depends if you trust the sources, and I know a lot of people don't. But I'm siding with people who apparently know the information and said, no, they offered him money, and Rogers said no. Kuhn didn't say he had any information about that. He just says, I know my friend, and I genuinely believe he wants to come back. That's my only retort to that. And then uh, there was also A.J. Hawk and James Jones and I don't have the audio for it. I could play it, but again, it's it's just a very long thing that would just play for like 20 minutes, and I don't want to do that because that would put us at nearly two hours. But I just took a couple notes. A.J. Hawk is clearly less optimistic than James Jones is. In fact, um, if you actually go back and watch it, watch the reaction of A.J. Hawk, who I think is, you know, he spent time with him in person at the Kentucky Derby and probably has a little bit of a better, more intimate knowledge of what's going on than James Jones does. Not saying James doesn't know, but... I, again, I don't think Rodgers is talking openly with people about this in total, complete detail, but I get the impression A.J. Hawk is a better idea. Watch the reaction from A.J. Hawk when James Jones is talking about this is all fine. A.J.'s, the look on his face is like, mm, I don't know about that. I'm just saying, draw your own conclusions, but go look at his face when he says that. This is from A.J. Hawk. He says, it's going to be an uphill battle, and he says, I don't know if it can be salvaged. That was from A.J. Hawk. And a lot of people are like, oh, no, he was very optimistic. It's like, I don't, I mean, he said the words, I don't know if this can be fixed. He said, as a former player and fan, I hope they can find a way, but I don't know if there's a way. That was A.J. Hawk. Then James Jones, again, Mr. 16-0, and which I love James Jones. I'm not trying to trash the guy. He's a mega Packer fan. He's always an eternal optimist. He's just, he's a good dude, right? And I like that about him. But it's, you know, it's sort of like, do I want advice from a car salesman on what kind of car to buy. It's not a great analogy, but you get what I'm saying, right? You ask Mr. Optimism about reality and and you end up getting optimism and you kind of wonder if, are we getting reality or are we getting optimism? They could be the same thing, but it's hard to tell. But James Jones comes out and again, he just blows the whole thing open. He, He just refutes everything, right? Oh, this has nothing to do with the GM being fired. It has nothing to do with uh, about money. It's just about putting the team first. He just cares about the Packers and the Packers winning. That's all he cares about. Which again, what does that mean? Because like has been said in other articles, if this is about the team winning, um, the team's in a great spot right now. 
And, I mean, there's nothing you can negotiate. You can't negotiate the team being better. The draft is done. There's no more money in free agency. The only way you can help this team win is by coming back and playing. That's it. Right? I mean, what, what is there to talk about going forward? There's nothing to talk about. So, again, you know, it's just, it's just such a, a nonsensical thing. And, I, again, he's, he's positive. He's a good dude. But that doesn't make sense to me. He also goes on to say that Aaron is mad about key guys leaving. Well, yeah, it's true. But again, I, I don't know. I, I, the, the John Kuhn thing, I would say, is, is for me the most optimistic thing that I tend to believe. That and Brian Gutekunst, to be completely honest. I think Gutekunst is probably the most optimistic in terms of, you know, being believable and whatnot. But also understand that there's going to be a level of coach speak, right? I mean, Lafleur and Gutekunst have the same information and had very different reactions to questions. But trying to read between the lines with Gutekunst, it doesn't feel like, um, I mean, I, I guess, I don't know. Maybe he's just got a great poker face. But um, I, I, I believe him when he says he thinks it can get done. But that's about, I mean, again, 95%. And, and I, I, again, you look at uh, Aaron Rodgers, or excuse me, Brett Favre. He, he had a very similar take as somebody that does currently talk to Aaron Rodgers, as somebody that does know the character of Aaron Rodgers. His take was very similar to what you find in, in Tyler Dunn's article. And that is, he's unbelievably headstrong, and he's dug in, and I don't think he's coming back. That's Brett Favre. A.J. Hawk. I don't know. It's going to be a big uphill battle. I don't know if this can be fixed. So, again, it's, it's like 95% of this is, it's real, and it's very serious, and it's leaning toward he's not coming back. 5% of this is, yeah, it's, he's, he's like 75, 80, 90% coming back. And, and the whole James Jones, you know, he even joked at the end, like, oh, I'll fix it, man. I'll make it all better. It's, it, it just seemed like he was just trying to be lighthearted and fun and, like, try to ease the tension a little bit and take the pressure off of Rodgers. Like, no, dude, Rodgers is a good guy. He wants to play for the pass. It's fine. It felt like a very good dude kind of thing to do, right? He's everybody's buddy. He just wants to, everything to be fine. But I don't really take that to be a real great source of information. Again, AJ, Kuhn, Gutekunst, James Jones just felt a little fluffy for me. But that's it. That is where we're at. And again, I tried not to narrate, but I failed. It is just, just is what it is. I mean, that's just, that's the way I see it. And I don't really know too many other ways. There, there's some wiggle room in there. And I'm not 100% saying he's gone. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just saying I'm, I'm at best confused on how he comes back, right? It's like you listen to Gutekunst, you listen to uh, Kuhn, and it's like, yeah, dude, I, I think they'll work it out, right? And it makes sense. I mean, where else is he going to go and all that? And I do genuinely think he likes being a Packer, and I think he likes Packers fans and whatever, despite whatever issues he might have. I think he has some level of, you know, reverence or um, even, what is it, nostalgia? You know, he's been here so long, he wants to end his... I, I, I believe all that. But again, what, what what is the best scenario that you can think of in terms of him coming back? Like, what what is the resolution here? We're not going to fire Gutekunst. We're not going to trade Love. Supposedly, we've already offered him top quarterback money, and he said no. Wh- what are we doing? And, and again, you go back to Brian Gutekunst. What did he say? We're trying to attack this from multiple fronts. I have to feel like we're kind of running out of options here. I want more decision-making power. I want more of this, that, or the other. And again, Gutekunst has already said, yeah, dude, I'll take your input. Okay, then where are we at right now? Why is this not done? Why is this not? What, what is the problem? So he wants top quarterback money and some other kind of commitments or what? I don't, I just don't get it, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of lost. But again, the point of this was we're going to go through every single thing. Here's what was said by who and when. So I don't want to hear any more nonsense about uh, Schefter said that the Packers were trying to trade uh, Rodgers and Gutekunst said that's a lie. Nope, that never happened. One guy said that. Zero people corroborated it, and Gutekunst denied it outright. So we got one lie, and what happened? It got shot out of the air instantly. Nothing else is being shot out of the air. Why? Why isn't anything else being refuted? Where's Rogers? Where's Tyler Dunn? Or not Tyler Dunn. Where's uh, what's Rogers' agent? David Dunn or something? Where's his best friend? Because apparently the only comment that that his his agent and best friend has made is that Rogers is really mad. The straw that broke the camel's back was Kumaro. So the only comment that his camp has made outside of the other comment that he doesn't want to come back uh, as long as Gutekunst is there, which supposedly came from his camp, the only other thing that came from his camp, which is his agent, is that yes, he's mad. And and the final straw for Rodgers was when they shipped him off, like an hour after he said he should stay. The comment wasn't, this isn't real. This isn't happening. He wants to come back. No, it was, this is why he's mad. 
I just, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know how to put these pieces together in a way that, that says the media is a bunch of liars and nothing is really going on here. This is overblown. I can't put two and two together and make that work. And you can get mad if you want. I'm just saying be rational and be mad. You put the puzzle together and show me how the pieces fit. Put the pieces together for me because I don't see it. And again, my, my, the absolute best case scenario here is some kind of a resolution between the Packers and Rodgers, but that resolution has to be not just some kind of a compromise, but Rodgers actually has bought in. No more nonsense garbage about, I'm going to leave, I'm going to throw temper tantrums, I'm going to storm out of here. No more not buying in, no more teasing coaches or GMs, none of that. Actually be a leader. And if that's what you're doing, great. But I'm just saying that's what it has to be contingent on. If you're not going to do those things, then you're not going to be here. If the reports aren't true, great. Give him his money and then he can stay. I'm on board. If the reports are true, he's either going to commit to knock that off or he's going to go. Simple. Simple to me. And I I tend to, and I don't even like saying it because I was so anti-Tyler Dunn the last time he wrote that article, but I agree with him. If these things are true, which he's positing that they are because he's literally talking to people on the phone who are telling him these things, he's saying then that shouldn't be, he shouldn't be allowed back and we need to move on with, with uh, Jordan Love. And again, if they're true, I tend to agree. But um, you draw your own conclusions. I don't care. Here, here's my thing. At the end of the day, what we're arguing about, what, what the anger about is how do we move forward in the best possible way? And we don't agree necessarily. We have differences in, in understanding of what's going on and what the best way moving forward is. As long as we're all rooting for the Packers, though, I'm not going to be mad at you. What I don't like is Rodgers comes back and people are rooting against him because they're mad. Or Jordan Love is the new quarterback and people are rooting against him because they're mad and they want to prove, ha ha, I told you. And they're so desperate to prove, ha ha, Gutekunst, you're an idiot. They want Jordan Love to fail, just like they wanted Rashawn Gary to fail. I think that stuff is garbage. I think that stuff is pathetic. If you're on the same team as me, if you're rooting for the Green Bay Packers, then fine. But we got to set all this stuff aside when the season starts. Whoever the quarterback is, whoever the GM is, whoever the coach is, whoever our running backs are, our offensive line, whoever is lining up wearing the green and gold, that's who you cheer for. If that's you, then you and I are cool. That's it. So anyways, this is my, I think my first ever hour and 30 minute podcast. I'm sure you're already past that with the ads. But for those people who are listening ad-free, I'm going to spend about 10 more seconds talking here so that I can officially hit a minute and 30 seconds. But looks like we're going to get there. I'm going to leave it at that. You folks have yourselves a fantastic day. I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.